last four days. Right now, futures uh, are pointing to another uh, triple-digit loss. Joining us now is Michael Zinn, Senior Vice President uh, in the Wealth Management Unit at UBS, and Michael Tyler, Chief Investment Officer at Eastern uh, Bank Wealth Management. We just heard about some stragglers, people that can't get their earnings in before, you know, the quarter ended in March. It's May, and we're still hearing from these people. But so mostly the earnings season is over. What, what, how do you, what do you give it? A, a, a B, B plus, B minus? Yeah, that's fair. Beat expectations. They weren't too high. You know, I, I would say overall we've had this sort of term the Chihuahua market. You know, it makes a lot of noise. It doesn't really go anywhere. Um, and the, the rallies in the past have kind of faded out, I'd say, because you had weaker oil, you had stronger dollar. This time around, you've got the rally again. But you've got some stronger oil, you've got some weaker dollar, so you've got cyclical participation. You know, that was one of the better stories, I think, of the earnings season. And we've just come a long way from where we were in January and February, though. Yeah. Well, there's, there's been this, it doesn't take much to make investors feel nervous. You know, I mean, this, we've been sort of camping under this volcano, you know, worrying about the, when Mount QE is going to blow, you know, and so investors have shown a lot of evidence of, you know, being very short the market, having big VIX positions, having, you know, overweight positions in the staples and defensive names. And so people have been worried, and, and for reason. I mean, there, there, there are clearly other issues out there. But, you know, it's possible with this cyclical leadership that you've got a chance of doing better here. And not a lot of people believe it still. That's probably a good thing. Um, but if you get energy, if you get industrials, if you get materials, if you get some legs under those names and those industries, you may have a shot at achieving some level of growth. We got up economy. to the old, we didn't get to the old highs. Right. And, and we turned down again. And there's yeah. a, you can look at it, and I don't know what a technician would say. But this is after the two, one of the, or both of the, the biggest worries, the headwinds are both reversed. Oil has started going back up. That's what we wanted. God, if oil goes down, we yeah. can't buy stock. And then the dollar yep. has weakened. And we still didn't get the new, and all we managed was 0.5% on the GDP, uh, GDP. Michael Tyler, I don't know, we got a lot of things we wanted and we didn't push to, to new highs. And there is a global problem with growth that isn't even being helped with, with all these, you know, negative rates, central banks easing, and we still can't seem to get, you know, above stall speed. And I wonder when the market takes well, yeah. note of that. I, I'm, I'm somewhat concerned about that. And also, uh, the prospect of a Trump presidency is a little bit more likely now than it was yesterday or the day before. Um, his impact on what markets might do is also somewhat uh, concerning, uh, if you look at his economic policies. But you're right, which negative one, rates ones? have not, which economic in process? particular, the dramatic tax cuts combined, especially with the very protectionist tariff increases, I think could be really negative for the U.S. and global economy. Because you've got, uh, this, you've got at least as, as negative of, of a protectionist sentiment from the left, which you didn't mention. I mean, you, you, you picked the, the problem. I from mean, Sanders, the, the yes, right has some pro-biz, even, you know, the Republican platform is going to have supply side stuff in it, less regulation. You know, Larry Kudlow has talked about Trump's tax plan being, being maybe positive. You decided to pick the scary prospect of Trump because of his protectionism and not the scary prospect of a socialist. Is that, is that, you're in Boston, I guess. I, well, I, I think it's more simply that uh, Sanders' path to a nomination in the presidency is tougher than, than Clinton's. Well, she's, the, uh, uh, and you, you, assume she'll move, you assume she'll move back to the center then because she's out there too, much further left uh, she, than the, on, on a lot of issues. That does not concern you, though, ac economically. I think she's economically a little bit more moderate than Obama is. She's certainly more mainstream and more accepted by markets than Trump is at this point. But we'll see how that goes. We're, we're still early days in the, in the general election campaign. But you're, you're right also that negative interest rates haven't really stimulated demand all that much. Um, and there is concern about what that will do to the global banking system. So right now we're at a point where we've had five straight quarters of earnings declines. We have not seen that, even with a lower dollar, even with oil prices up, we haven't seen the market hitting new highs. So I think that we could be in for a summer that's a, a little bit rocky before finally you get to third and fourth quarter. I think the earnings comparisons start looking much more favorable. Uh, and at that point, I think you can see the market hitting new highs. But it's going to be rocky between here and there. Michael, do you, do you, you, you have been around for the last eight years. Do you think uh, the next four years under Trump would be worse than the last eight years for the private sector or, or, or what? Well, you, you can't rule them out. I mean, I guess if, if a 5,000 to one long shot in, in uh, England, you know, can win the, uh, the, uh, the soccer tournament, Leicester. 
you know. No, yeah. I know. So you're yeah. saying Trump's like a 5,000 to one shot? Well, I'm saying you can't rule anything out well, because I'm not, I'm not statistically right, right now, he's statistically it, most most sentient <laughs> people would tell you that the numbers don't work for him right now. Uh, I know, but that's I'm what just, they've been telling it. But, you know, the, there, black, the black swan is there's incited There's unconventional horizon, wisdom you know? coming, coming my way. I, uh, right. So they, they have right. been, there have been some people that have underestimated him on the... I the, heard about those people. Yeah. 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 Uh, we'll see. Yeah. There's not been a lot of real policy specifics, obviously. Um, there's been more of a, of, a, of a charismatic effect that a lot of people have focused on and I think that's been to his credit and to his success. So I think as we get more serious, as we get past the convention, as we get to policy, as we get to VPs being named, um, as we get probably more coalescing, you know, uh, around him, we'll probably see, you know, how serious it is and the market can begin to make up its mind. For now, we've got more uncertainty but given it, But my question is, given that, yeah. I mean, he did operate in the private sector. And yeah. he did, you know, run a company and actually had private sector experience. You're willing to say just from here on out that, that what would happen over the next four years would be worse than the private sector treatment we've gotten over the past eight years? It's an unknown with Trump. I mean, it really? just is an unknown because the, the level of specificity. I'm just saying it's hard to get, for the, if you're a private yeah. sector guy, it's hard to see that it could actually be, be much, much worse on the private sector. Yeah. Well, this well, gets I, back I think, to, you know, uh, in terms of you know, what, what your yeah, review of the last eight years is. Okay, and, right. And okay. All right. right. Okay. Two Michaels. Mike, Michael and frankly, Zim. also what Congress is likely to do, whether they can um, step in the way of Trump, we don't know. Right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. When we come back, a 